We're back with another episode of the No More Interruptions podcast. And today I have the privilege to sit down and chat with Charmaine. So Charmaine, introduce yourself. Hey, what's up? I am Charmaine. I love all things sparkly. I love cooking reality TV. I have three kids, one husband of over 20 years, um, and we are still friends and we still giggle. So that is super cool. And that's my that's my life. I always like to start off with that. How I serve is I work with professional moms that have ADHD to help them regain their time, energy, and focus. Basically get all those lovely little sticky notes and tabs that we have open in our head and to yeah. put them out in a way that can help us thrive. So that is me in a nutshell. Beautiful. And before you became the ADHD coach and helping moms, what has been your experience or your, what we like to use the word interruption um, with ADHD? Like what's what, like what led you to this? What was interrupting you? So I am like most women of my age range. I was not diagnosed as a child. I don't blame my parents for that because I am a 70s baby. Being diagnosed with anything in the 80s, like early to mid 80s, put you in the room where you were not even educated at all, right? right. So my parents did a great job of finding ways to help me to manage and win with my quirkiness. Mm -hmm. and providing me with tools to do that with. It wasn't always pleasant, but of course, when you look back, you go, oh my God, I am so grateful that, that they didn't maybe get me diagnosed back then because it wasn't as open as it was now. So right. I was a late diagnoser. What happened is my youngest son was diagnosed. Okay. I started to notice that he, it's just like, okay, he's a smart kid, but for some reason he cannot retain information. Like it's, it just seemed like, like what the heck is going on? And so we went and we got him and there was a couple of other things, but we went and got him diagnosed. He has inattentive ADHD, which most boys don't have, you know, they're normally hyperactive, whereas yeah. his is the inattentive, you know, variety where um, he's kind of in his head a lot. Yeah. Um, so I'm going through the questions and I'm like, oh my God, this sounds familiar. <laughs> and I'm just like going through and checking off. Um, we also have, my oldest daughter is diagnosed with autism. And okay. it's so funny that even when I did her, she's 22. Even when I did her paperwork years ago, it didn't click to me back then that we're so similar. <laughs> and so my interruption has always been until, you know, gosh, maybe five years ago, it's always been She's a really smart girl, but she can't seem to stay focused on or finish anything. So my entire life, I felt like an epic fail. Like mm -hmm. I could never see what I had done great because everybody was always showing me where I was short. So that's where I focused on. And right. so one of those major, inter like I've had lots of interruptions, but the biggest interruption for me was the diagnosis because it flips everything around. It, I was like, yay, I'm not crazy. And then can I cuss? Yeah, of course. Then I was like, oh, shit. I could have been getting so much like everybody has been like beating on me. And I'm, there's actually a different way that my brain works. works and so like yeah. there's a part joy and then a part being really pissed off that for your entire life, everybody has discounted you as flighty. And and like that hurts because it's like, you know, my again, my entire life is like, get your head out the clouds, you know, come back down to earth. You know, just it, it, it was just like all these little things that I don't think people understand how they impact somebody who's already struggling to stay on task. Right. But it impacts you in a way where you're always feeling like you're not enough and that in order to feel like you're enough, you you have to like I was exhausted. I was always exhausted. I could never organize like it was just like I was always trying to keep up and it was just so exhausting. So that was a beautiful interruption for me. I know sometimes interruptions, I've had interruptions that were just like, you know, life stoppers, right? Yeah. I've had yeah. those, but this is like the most recent one that stopped me and caused me to reassess 
how I was interacting with my own brain. And so at the time, my business was centered around moms that had special needs kids. Here's the funny thing I found out when I started looking back over all my client rosters. 90% of my moms were exhibiting some of the same behaviors as their kids. So I was unconsciously attracting other moms (laughs) that were neurodiverse and I was already supporting them. So I just switched it because there's so much information out there for the kids, but when you're a mom that has special needs kids, or even when you're a mom that has your own neurodiversity, there's really not a lot. I mean, there's magazine articles and all this good stuff, but there's not really a hub or a space or someone that can help you to that gets that you've got like a thousand tabs open in your head. Plus Mm -hmm. you've got all this stuff in front of you and you're going on like 90 million hundred miles an hour but you just can't seem to get it together. Like right. I get that. And so I, I, I consult from a way of, I get you. Mm-hmm. We're not trying to clean everything up. Cause that's what people with ADHD want to do. We wanted like, if I'm going to reorganize my kitchen, I want to reorganize my entire kitchen in one night. I don't want to take steps. And then like halfway through you, like, Oh God, this is no. Okay. So I'll put this away the next week. <laughs> And then like it never gets done. So it's, you know, helping them to look at things in smaller bite-sized chunks, which I think is what a lot of us need, not just those of us that are neurodiverse, is I I have my moms look at things in sprints and not forget about the year. Because when you have ADHD, a year seems like 20 years. Yeah. And yeah. you'll hyper focus on the year and you won't even be present as to what's my next step. Like I would sit and I would be in analysis paralysis like a mofo. It's like, okay, plan out your next year. And so here I am. My brain is like, okay, you got step one. Okay. Now you need to have step two. Now you need, yeah. to, now you need to have all the steps because if you don't have all the steps, like my brain needs, like GPS was a godsend because going someplace and my brain not knowing what the next steps were and where to go was like crippling. So I really didn't go anywhere, but thank Again, thank God that GPS has gotten so much better because I'm a lot more, a lot less in my head and a lot more confident right. about maneuvering through the world. But that's mm. that's what happens with eight. You know, I know with from my experience and what I've heard from other women with ADHD is that if you ask me to plan out my year, I am trying to plan out every last step. Like each, uh, yeah, I need all the steps right now. Because until I get that, I can't move. move so, yep. <laughs> so I have them condense things into 30 day sprint, like 30 days. What's the next 30 days look like? Like this is okay. What's the first three steps? Okay. Now, and then getting them to trust mm-hmm. when you get the first, when you do the first three, the next three are going to come. And that's so scary when your brain is like, I need to know what's next. I need to know what's next. What, where are we going? What's going on? Right. <laughs> it's like so hard. Did I answer your question? Because I know I go off on a. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. So is that the same strategy you use for yourself? God, yes. Okay. Oh, my okay. gosh. I, what I do for them, I do for me. Recently this Beautiful. weekend, um, I found myself in this space of I didn't know what to do. Mm-hmm. And I know that when I don't know what to do, it means that something is not clear. So I freeze. So I spent this weekend getting clear again. And I I tell my clients this all the time. Your life has to be a continuous space of clarity. It is regaining your clarity. Um, Every week you need to be scoring your life areas and taking a look at what's going on. um, Because it's so easy with life moving so fast to lose clarity. Or if there is a pivot in your life, you need to go back to see where you said you wanted to go and how this aligns with that. And again, when your brain moves that fast, it feels like that's stupid. It feels like that's a waste of your time and energy. Um, Getting clear almost feels lazy. It almost feels lazy. And it feels for me, it feels like I'm stupid because I should know what to do. Like, I I know what I have to do next. So why would I have to get clear again? And so I have to, I have to not defeat, but I have to go to that self-talk. I hear you, girl, trust me. We good. Let's do this clarity. Like there's a lot of conversations that I have with Benita. Benita is the ADHD brain. I'm like, girl, look, I know you worried about that. 
I know you are and you have every right. You are valid. But trust me, I got you, girl. Let's do this. And so me and Benita, then we get on the same page. <laughs> and, you know, then I'm able, but I have to tell my, I have to literally out loud go, girl, slow down. That's not where we at. Bring this back. What's true? Okay, what's true? Okay, so what do we need to do? What would need you, which you, okay, let's get clear. And so I had to take myself through my own process. Now, I take somebody through it in about four or five hours, but I can do it in like 20 minutes because I've been doing, <laughs> but doing that process shows me, okay, this is why I'm kind of confused. It's because right. the gap is here, here, and here. And so then I begin to simplify that and take out all the extra stuff that I thought was important. And then I organize it. So that's, you know, I clarify what's going every week as I, not every week, I'm going to be honest. I don't <laughs> do it every week because sometimes I'm like, oh, I got this. This is good. And then just like this past weekend, my brain is like, what's next? We are yes. so confused. What's yes. going on? And so I have to go back to clarifying what's going on now, what I want to happen next taking out all the stuff, simplifying, taking out all the stuff that does not belong to me, um, relying on my team. I have, like I said, I have a husband, I have yeah. children. Look, this, how did I get your stuff? Like this, mm -mm, take this back. I'm not doing this. I, I Do something with it, you know? Yeah. And then I put it into my order. You know, I set it into my system. I time block. I get the most productivity. It's so funny because my, my brain fights the hell out of this. I get the most productivity out of time blocking because my brain is like, oh my God, that's too rigid, girl. You don't want to do that. And so I have to go, but we are so much more productive and we're so much more focused and we're productive on things that actually matter. Like we are not scrolling social media for two hours when we say we're going to be on there for 15. Like <laughs> we are actually getting things done. And so that time blocking, when I do that organized stuff, it's just like, it's, it's gold. It makes my life so much easier. <laughs> wow. Oh my gosh. You are, you and I are like this. So Benita has a friend named Berta. Berta is my person. Yes. <laughs> That's my person that I talk to. Um, and it's like when you were talking about her and just that and the time blocking and yeah, and it's, I usually organize myself because I'm undiagnosed ADHD, but I, 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 you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in the field. Yeah. Um, so I know I, I'm not going to, I don't need to be diagnosed. I, I know the <laughs> strategies that I need to put in place <laughs> yep. to get help myself through. So, um, but yes, today, I usually on Sundays or first thing Monday morning, yep. I'll sit down and go through my schedule and say, okay, this is what I'm supposed to do. Here's what the, the week's going to look like. I didn't do that today. Did not do that today. So you're like talking and I'm like, oh gosh, that's me. She's talking about me. She knew that I didn't do anything today. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So, wow. That's, yeah. It, it's, it's, some days it's, a, it's, um, it's a struggle. Yeah. Some days it's a struggle and some days you, you could fly and get all like, kinds hey, of this is, yes. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's definitely um, a struggle. And my son is actually the in antenna, antenna, inattentive ADHD. So he's the opposite. He's in his head, but he's diagnosed. But yeah, he's very, uh, yeah. So when you <laughs> just kind of like, we're both like, I'm the outside and, going 10 miles an hour, thinking things, people are talking to me and my brain's going 10 miles an hour while they're my talking to me. says, everybody else is playing checkers, but you playing chess. You like always yes. 10 moves ahead. I'm like, yeah, but in my brain that keeps me safe. Although, right. it, although yes. it ends up mucking things up yes. to me, it's like, okay, if I at least know the next five steps, then <laughs> I'll know how to respond. Like what's, what do I need to get? Like all this stuff. So in our household, my husband is very, I, I married somebody, praise God, who is very present moment. Right. And who like, if so, if an emergency happens, he's the guy. Because even though I account for emergencies, emergencies never happen how you planned them to happen. Yeah. 
So if it's not in my playbook, I'm like, oh my God, like the power went out like for a couple of days. And I'm like, oh my God, we got it. He's like, babe, calm down. I got this. <laughs> wow. So with all of that, right, you're diagnosed with ADHD. Like what's like for other women out there, especially in the community, what are some of the, the, limiting belief thoughts that you experienced during that process? I know. I know. I know. <laughs> Is that a rhetorical question? Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. You know, the limiting beliefs of, especially when like I have sometimes certain tics mm -hmm. where like I, I don't really sit still all the time. Um, I'm always fidgeting. I'm, you know, it's like, am I looking weird? Am I looking off into the, like, it's so funny. I was doing, um, I used to do a lot of lives, but when I think I either have to close my eyes or I have to look off, which, you know, all of the proponents and the, the lie detector people and all this other stuff are like, oh, when well, somebody's looking off, that means they're lying. And it's like, right. I'm not lying. I'm thinking like that. Yes. I need to process. And so it's... <laughs> The limiting belief of nobody's going to believe me because I'm always like off into the sunset with my eyes or um, I'm going to go off on a tangent and like, I'm just going to look like, I'm going to look stupid. Like that was the biggest one is that if I don't know all the steps and all the stuff, I'm going to look stupid and yes, I don't want to look stupid yes. because again, going back to childhood, you know, it, and that's kind of how I knew my son. It's like, we would ask him stuff. And then he would like lie about it. And it wasn't that he was lying because, and that's another thing I think people don't get, you know, kind of segueing the kids and eat. It's not that he's lying because he's trying to be defiant. It's just that under pressure, you feel like you have to give an answer. And so you just give whatever you think that person will need so that you right. can move forward. And it's not, you know, it, he's not, he wasn't trying to be malicious. It was like, well, baby, you know, you have and giving him that space to know it's okay to take a breath and think about it. You don't have mm -hmm. to just immediately say something, you know, having those pieces in place. Uh, that was another one is that I don't think well in reverse. So okay. be, having ADHD, you will get gaslight like a mofo because we often don't think we're not trying, we're not remembering the past. We like 50 steps in the future. And mm -hmm. It was so easy for people to go, well, well, how do you know? Like, you don't remember. Mm -hmm. Like, and, you know, tell me the the day, the time and the whatever that I said that. And it's like, well, shit, it took me enough to just remember that you treated me in this way. So, yeah. um, so always feeling like kind of that people were out to get me, if mm. that makes any sense. Yeah, um, no. So that and that that caused me to. um I take notes whenever I talk to people because right. I don't remember my, like my short term memory is not the bee's knees most days. Um, in between like the ADHD and I have like brain trauma, I used to have seizures. So right. things that like normally after it's kind of, what is that animal that forgets like as soon as it's like some animal that as soon as um, stuff is gone, it's like, Ooh, I've forgotten. Um, that's kind of me and oh, it's, it's okay. made for, a, it's kind of made for a charmed life because I don't necessarily remember all the icky stuff. Right. You know, in that sense, I'm present. Like people will go, well, you can remember all these weird facts, but how come you can't remember X, Y, and Z? Because that fed my dopamine. Yeah. What you're talking about does not feed my dopamine. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. And that's, so, yeah. that's a hard concept for people to un understand. Exactly. It's not, we're yeah. not linear. We're totally not linear brained. It's very splintered based yeah. on what we have learned about the brain. Having, you know, any type of neurodiversity is very splintered. Like yeah. I can be a genius in this area, but in this area, it's like, you don't have to break it down to me like I'm two. Yeah. Yeah. I need you to break it down some more. <laughs> yeah. I don't understand what you're saying. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. Like, yeah, those limiting beliefs of I'm going to look stupid. I'm going to sound stupid. Nobody's going to believe me. Um, why even try? Like, that was my favorite one. Why even try? I'm going to fuck it up anyway. So mm -hmm. it's easier to ask for.
forgiveness than permission. And just like I, I never I stopped following, I stopped following rules at like 13 because when I was a kid, it didn't matter if I followed the rules, I was gonna do something wrong anyway. So I just I just went buck wild and did what I wanted. <laughs> And you're doing fine. <laughs> wow. Okay. So you now at 13, you basically shifted your mindset and started doing whatever you wanted to do. What does that look like now? Um, Are so you I had still to do whatever you want to do. Kinda. I had to revector that. I have chill, I had children and such. <laughs> um <laughs> But I still, you know, my husband, it's so funny. It's like his thing is like, do you have the, because my always, my thing is like, I don't have the bandwidth. And so mm-hmm. I don't have the bandwidth means my brain cannot, oh my God, more, I think people are starting to talk about this now, but being a woman with ADHD and your menstrual cycle and perimenopause, when I tell you some days I do not have the, I cannot form a, semi, like it'll be something, I cannot formulate a sentence. Yeah. I, no, that's not happening. Stop talking to me. Like, and my family had got, now they get, stop talking to me. And I don't have, they get, I don't have the bandwidth. That means I'm not listening. Anything you say to me is going to piss me off because my brain can't process what it is right. you're saying. Um, and just leave me alone for a minute and let yeah. me get myself together. Um, me doing what I want to do now just looks differently. Like, okay. You know, because it's more grown. Like back then, it was like, let me go to all the parties. Let me try all the things. Let me, you know, that was living my best life then. Now it's like, let me go take a walk around the block by myself. You know, let me go to the float tank and float for an hour and just be in sensory deprivation and like get my nervous system back together. You know, Um, let me sit in my prayer closet, my prayer meditation closet and burn some candles and just have like, you know. It just looks different. It looks right. so much different. So I guess you could say yes. The only thing I can't wait to get rid of is this job, but we on our way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then that leads to what are the, some of the goals that you have in this next quarter? Like what so do you in the next quarter? Yeah. Uh we are planning a trip as a family to Cape Town, South Africa. So oh, planning cool. that and seeing what that looks like, like even though it's not going to be until November, December of 2024, but uh-huh. still kind of breaking it down to see what that looks like, you know, and just kind of getting an idea and finding a travel agent. So that's something right. that's something I'm working on this quarter. Getting all my legal documents signed is this quarter. Right. Um and working with my parents on their estate plan. I don't think we do that enough as older kids. Um, and being that they're getting up there in age and they have assets, but they yeah. don't have enough assets to cover if something goes wrong. So we want to make sure these assets don't impact Medicaid. Like yeah. that's the state of life that we're in, like for my parents and for his parents is to make sure that assets are structured so they yeah. can still get what they're due through Medicaid and those other things and making sure that they're good. Um, and then just more like on my list, I just did more fun. So for this mm-hmm. quarter, every week I have to do something fun. And so I've planned it out. So every week I have something fun. Um, my pleasure is my priority this particular quarter. And that was like one of the areas that had dipped. Like when I just did my, my assessment of myself, I'm like, right. no wonder why she's getting stressed out. She's not having any fun. Yeah. So I had to go back and re-put those things in. Um, and it's good to do that because I, you know, now I can see that um, for my last assessment that my self-care game is up, oh. right? I'm meditating. I'm taking breaks throughout the day. I'm getting great sleep now, drinking my water, all that good stuff. But then, you know, now my fun area is um, <laughs> reduced. Reduced. Uh, but I've had to learn how to, to be even beat myself up over that because you're never going to be a perfect 10 in any life area all the time. And you can have life areas a 10, but then something else is always going to need your support. So right, knowing right. that, like, that was one of the biggest brain shifts that I had to get was this is a journey. There is no end. There's like no real end goal until it's like you die. 
Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you're going to continuously be in this process of making pivots and shifts and making improvements. Like nothing yeah. is going to be perfect. And my brain likes for likes because perfect makes sense, right? I mean, yeah. not really. But, perfect you know, means it's done. Right. When it means it's right, done. Yes. Yeah, it's done. Because like it's it not being done. yeah, it not being done is anxiety driving, right? Yes. Yes. So that was the biggest brain shift that I continually work with. I have therapist, I have a coach, I have a girl that does rinky and moves my energy. I do like I do pretty much all the things. All I need is a shaman, wow. you know. <laughs> I do a lot of things to keep me going, okay, is this true? Is it really yeah. true? All right. Are you sure it's true? You know, and not asking myself from a space of not believing myself, but my brain will catastrophe, catastrophe, catastrophe catastrophize. What's the word? Yeah. yeah. Everything. Yes. I can, I can make a water drip. Like, oh my God, my entire house is going to cave into the ground and we need to start moving. Like, you know, it's. And you believe it. Right. You start to believe it. <laughs> right. So I've had to start putting things into practice and I want your listeners to know that takes work. It takes yes. so much work. Like I didn't get here by like reading one book and then, yay, I've got all my stuff together and I have all of these strategies. Like it's taken years of me being consistent, um, seeking support in so many different areas and continuously being willing to work on it. And I think that's the key is you just be consistent. And if yeah. you have to take small steps along your journey, pick something small and just keep going with it slowly yeah. slowly 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 i love that you're you you do a self-assessment <laughs> on yourself <laughs> and that you've discovered that you know what you need to do um yeah what you need to do for yourself mm -hmm. and what you know what areas are and how often do you do that self-assessment on average yeah. every other week so like if oh. I put all my months together, like the goal is weekly so I okay. can pivot faster. Right. But what happens is <laughs> I do it one week and the next thing I'm like, oh, I'm good. And then it's like, yep. but no, you need to go back and reassess because now you confuse again and you freeze them. Like, and right. I can always tell that through my planner, like my, my planner, I can tell when I'm clear because yep. the activities I have in there are very <laughs> laser focused. When I am not clear, like my top three is blank, yep. but then I end up making a to-do list of all the random shit in my head that just <laughs> pop up. <laughs> and I go back and I look at that and, and the weeks that are the least clear are the weeks where I don't have my Friday finishers. So right. if I like to start adding stuff in because I wasn't clear, it's like, oh yeah, that I, let's, let's reassess and see what's going on. And that yep. takes practice. It takes practice yes. to assess yourself and where you are on a regular. Um, I think that's something those of us that are neurodiverse need a lot is it's kind of like self-soothing because I get to see where I am. Um, yeah. And yeah, I'm consistent with it, but I want people to also understand consistency doesn't always mean every day, which means you don't need to beat yourself up if you miss a couple of days because either you were in your head or you were not feeling well. And I always teach my clients, do not start back at day one. That will depress you. Yeah. If you stop that day, yep. If you stop that day number five and you take three days off, the next day is day number six. Like keep yeah. it moving. And the goal then becomes how many days can I do in a row? Not I have to start back all over from day one. Because you right. you'll never with the brains and lives that we have, many of us would never hit the mark. Like I am not some single child free dude or somebody that has a whole bunch of staff to where that's all I can focus on is my goal. Right. I, I've got my goals. I've got other people goals. I got family. Goals. Like I have, I have multiple things going on. Yeah. Amazing. Beautiful. So there are many women in our community who have ADHD, who have undiagnosed like myself and who have diagnosed, but how can they connect with you? <coughs> The best way to connect with me, if you're looking for me on social, is LinkedIn. I do have okay. an Instagram. I go on there to look at the pictures. That is my dopamine push when I don't want to do nothing. So I do have right. an Instagram, um, and you can DM me there. 
uh, I'll get to it. Uh, but the best way <laughs> is either LinkedIn or my website, which is the charmedlife.me. And there you'll be able to find any webinars or workshops I have coming up. Um, you'll be able to, you know, just kind of peruse and see what's going on or how even to connect with me. Amazing. Beautiful. So we like to wrap up our podcast here with rapid fire questions. Are you ready? Let's go. Okay. So what is one advice do you would give to a woman currently experiencing an interruption of ADHD in their lives? Just let it be. Don't try to control it. Um, if ADHD is disrupting you, take a break. Take do the most least and the counterintuitive thing, which is pull back. Right. Pull back and get clear. Like just don't try to go in and fix everything. Cause I know we like to research and go down a research hole. Don't do that. <laughs> pull back and kind of get clear about what is it that you're looking for? What like you know, what do you feel like your gap is? Okay. Um, and then go in and look, because otherwise you will come up with a bunch of random things that have nothing that ain't going to help you. And you will end up more overwhelmed. Yeah, I agree. Um, who's someone that inspires you? <sighs> my daughter. Aww. So my daughter is on the spectrum. She's 22 and she just got her first job and, but she Yay! never gives up. She never gives up. She pretty much always has a positive attitude unless you piss her off right? Um, <laughs> or she gets overwhelmed. Like she'll, if she gets overwhelmed, then she's, you know, like we all are, she's not yeah. the most, but other than that, she is an angel and absolute, I am so grateful for her. She's taught me so much in patience. Wow. Beautiful. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> And what's a non-negotiable in your life? My damn sleep. <laughs> when 930 comes, my kids know to not come up. My lights are off. Do not talk to me. Um, I love having older kids because I can go, okay, I'm going to bed at 930. Your lights need to be off by 10. You know, my 12-year-old, my 22-year-old, whatever, girl. But the 12-year-old, your lights need to be off by 10. I trust that you'll do that. And I always know when he's busted that boundary, when he doesn't want to get up in the morning. So like, right. and he goes like, how do you know? I know I'm psychic. I, psychic. Mommy's always know, but I always like, I always know. <laughs> right. Wow. And what is your go-to tool strategy? And, and I'm referring to like podcasts, resources. What is your go-to tool? Brendan Bouchard's Growth Day app. This app is absolutely fabulous. It's like $40 for the entire year. But like the assessments that I'm telling you about, right. I do the assessments on my phone in his app. It's like the quick questions you go through and you move. And every day he has this daily fire where it helps. It's like mindset coaching in the morning, oh, um, which is perfect. I almost think he has ADHD. I almost do. You what know is you look at his, um, what did you say his um, app was? It's, it's called Growth Day. Growth day. Uh huh. Okay. Growth day. And if you get the basic membership, which is what I have, cause I don't, I don't need no more. I don't need to learn anything else. I really right. don't. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's for, it's about $40 a year. And then uh -huh. he has like an upper tier. That's like 300 a year, but you get to go to like, it's like you get to hear different speakers and stuff like that. So if that's what you're looking for, great. But for most people that I encounter, like for us, Sometimes right. I just need 15 to 20 minutes of somebody helping me to see things differently. Yes. And just make that shift for you. Right. Exactly. And so he does a lot yeah. of those mindset shifts that seem to click for those of us that whose brains work differently. OK. Um, and just how he presents them. It's really clear. It's not fluffy, but yet it's like in this affirming, positive, happy tone, because I can't get down with coaches that feel like they need to browbeat you. Right. To motivate you is very affirming and from the heart. And so it's really, I love that. That is my go-to every day. I am, as long as they're not over 20 minutes, if they're over 20 minutes, he's lost me. But cause it's in okay. the morning as I'm getting ready to go. Um, but yeah, that's, that's like my lifeline. If I don't do anything else, I'm doing that. 
Beautiful. Well, thank you so much, Charmaine, for being on the show and on the thank No More you, Interrupters podcast. This was a great conversation, lots of learning, um, and lots of connection, and I'm glad that I'm not the only one doing these things and having, uh, <laughs> naming your person. I love it. Yes. <laughs> love it, love it, love it.